According to a statement issued by the uh, Secretariat of the Judicial Conduct uh, Tribunal, the tribunal has found Western Cape Judge President John Tropier guilty of gross misconduct as envisaged in Section 177 of the Constitution. Uh, the tribunal compiled its report on the complaint lodged by the justices of the Constitutional Court against Judge President Tropier. Let's uh, talk more on this. We're now joined by constitutional expert, Advocate Paul Hoffman. Advocate, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you very much for availing yourself to SABC News this afternoon. Good afternoon, Flo, and good afternoon to your viewers as well. Thank you for the opportunity. You're most welcome. Advocate, what, what does this uh, finding then mean um, when it comes to previous judgments of uh, John Tropia? I do understand there's still processes uh, to follow up after this, uh, but let's just say we get to the end of it, and it is indeed found that uh, the judge did influence or attempt to influence uh, other justices, judges. Are there, are there any sort of retrospective, is there retrospective impact um, if any, if I can put it that way, on his previous judgments. As we know, uh, you know, it is said a judge must be fit and proper and so forth. So if it is found that he influenced anyone, then we're saying he's not fit and proper. And therefore, technically, then there would then be some sort of retrospective impact on his uh, past judgments as a judge. If anybody has any difficulty with his past judgments, the appropriate remedy is to uh, take those judgments on appeal. Mm. Mercifully, I think we're only at the end of the beginning with uh, Judge Schlorpe because he has got a, a, a skill at uh, stretching this dispute uh, interminably. But if we accept that we are at the end of the beginning rather than at the beginning of the end, then um, the... the the, the rule is that his judgment stand and that uh, the, the uh, parties involved in the judgment, if they feel that there has been some irregularity because of the uh, lack of integrity of the judge, they, they would be entitled to seek to appeal that um, particular finding. But it would be done on a case-by-case -case basis. It is not... A blanket finding. Yeah. Uh, advocate, the you, you, interestingly, you use the term he, he, he likes stretching uh, uh, disputes. And so then I want to talk to uh, the possible recourse uh, that uh, the, the judge uh, might then have. From my understanding, and of course you can correct me if I'm wrong, from this point of the Judicial Conduct Tribunal, we then move to the uh, Judicial Service uh, Commission, who will then, as I understand, then deliberate on the issue. During that time, uh, Judge Tropez's uh, recourse is that he can possibly take this then on, on review by beginning at uh, the High Court, the Supreme Court of Appeal, and then ending at uh, the Constitutional Court. Now, if he's to no, then... He can't go to the Constitutional Court. Now, this court is where I wanted to go. Yes. In, in, in the dispute. Correct. He can he can't indeed start review proceedings um, uh, assailing the reasoning in the Judicial Conduct Tribunal yeah. and seeking to set aside that. And if he's unsuccessful in the High Court, he, he does have an appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal. And um, uh, clearly the, the tactic is to try and make it last long enough to get him to a uh, pensionable age. Yeah. Um, um, so, so, so Advocate, where I was going, Advocate, where I was going is that then isn't there a situation in the fact that ordinarily, if it was anybody else, the fact that you could approach the Constitutional Court, but in his case he cannot because we know that 11 Corn Court judges uh, did in fact in May 2008 complain about him. So it's this, essentially the same, uh, the same court. So is that not an issue, the fact that he, he cannot um, at the end of it go to uh, the Constitutional Court? Is that um, in terms of his recourse, is that, you know, does he have enough uh, recourse, if I can put it that way? Well, look, it, it's theoretically possible that by the time the Supreme Court of Appeal has rebuffed him, that the personnel in the uh, Constitutional Court will all be different to the personnel who were involved in the lodging of the complaint. Mm. Remember, Chief Justice Lange was the, uh, the Chief Justice at the time. Yes. He is no longer with us. Uh, Deputy Chief Justice Mosineki has um, retired, 
Uh, Justice Jafta was an acting judge in the uh, Constitutional Court at the time that Judge Slopey um, sought to, to uh, de defeat the ends of justice by derailing his reasoning. Mm. And uh, Judge Jafta is, is on the point of retiring. Judge Inkabindi has already retired. So it may be that by the time the case is, is, is dealt with, um, disposed of by the Supreme Court of Appeal, that it will be possible to, to approach a new constitutional court. There will be arguments about it, just as there were at an earlier stage in, in, in the proceedings. And the answer at the earlier stage, when the personnel um, uh, overlapped to a, a fair degree, was that the Supreme Court of Appeal is the end of the line. And that, that was, well, it had to be accepted because the constitutional court declined to uh, to entertain the matter. Yeah. Uh, Advocate, I'm, I'm, from what I'm hearing, you're envisaging that this might then be a very long and uh, drawn-out process if you're already anticipating that uh, some of those uh, Concord judges will, will not even be there. How, how long are we looking at uh, in, in, in a situation like this? I mean, you know, as you speak, we remember that, of course, then, you know, after all of the appeals, all that, it still has to go to the National Assembly in, in the end. So are we really looking at a long, drawn-out out, uh, process if you are to, to, to look at it? That, it? that will depend on the way in which the matter is case managed. The first thing that needs to happen is that the Judicial Service Commission must recommend to the President that um, uh, Judge President Schlorpe be suspended pending the finalization of the disciplinary processes against him. The finding of gross misconduct on his part, if confirmed by the Judicial Service Commission, will lead to a vote in the National Assembly. And if that vote is two thirds in favor of his removal from office, then the president has to remove him from office. If it is not, then he, he continues in office at, at the behest of uh, the National Assembly. Yeah. If he is unhappy at this stage with the, the reasoning of the, uh, the tribunal, then he, he can now immediately seek to uh, review the decision of the tribunal. And that will begin in the High Court. And it is possible for the High Court to manage it in a way that um, uh, get a hearing in short order and if there is an appeal, the Supreme Court of Appeal can also manage the case um, so that the public interest is served by uh, shortening the interminable delays that have bedeviled this matter since 2008. Yeah. Advocate, um, one of the issues that... I, I imagine might happen, uh, not on his legal team, but uh, uh, some of the issues that might be raised by uh, Judge Klope might be, you know, to raise the issue of perhaps impartiality on, on the part of the Judicial uh, Conduct uh, Tribunal. My question to you, Advocate, is who oversees or overlooks the Judicial Conduct uh, Tribunal and how it's compiled and, you know, how they come to these sort of uh, decisions? I understand it was a unanimous uh, decision that they've come to. If you can paint a picture for us, in terms of how this the process is really yes it, it it's um it's interesting that there wasn't such a thing as a judicial conduct tribunal at the time mm. that uh judge Slopey visited his colleagues on constitution hill it is it is an invention of the uh, legislature since the the time of the um uh, the, the visits but um uh, essentially what is happening is that the Judicial Service Commission has the task of appointing and disciplining the judges in South Africa and the mechanism with a serious case such as this one is to, instead of having the whole tribunal, the whole uh, Judicial Service Commission uh, uh, sit sitting in judgment of a complaint a, a tribunal, um, which in this case consisted of a judge and two other legal practitioners, um, uh, is, is appointed in order to uh, receive the, the facts and the arguments in the matter to, 
um, supervise the cross-examination of the witnesses and to give an award, which which is, has now happened in this case, and it, the reasoning is set out in great detail over 46 pages, and the conclusion is reached that Judge Slorpy has indeed been guilty of a gross misconduct, and th that is a ground for removing him from office. All right. So yeah. the, uh, the, yeah. the, 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 the process, as I say, we're at the end of the beginning rather than the beginning of the end. Understood. Advocate Hoffman, it was a pleasure. Thank you for speaking to us uh, this afternoon here on SABC News, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. You're most welcome. Advocate uh, Paul Hoffman, uh, constitutional uh, law expert.